Attention wholesalers. Building a buyer's list is actually a bad idea. Have you ever heard that before? If not, welcome to the real world of truth, signal, and wisdom in real estate investing. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I get this question a lot where people say, Phil, what's the best way to build a buyer's list? And my answer is almost always, don't. And so in this video, I'm going to explain why that's my advice. And it goes way beyond the surface because on the surface, uh, from common sense perspective, it makes so much sense to build a buyer's list if you're going to be wholesaling. What you're going to need to do is find a buyer, so you might as well build the list first, right? And also a lot of beginners fear when they're wholesaling a property, what if I can't find a buyer? I've signed this contract with this seller. And so they feel if they have this long list of names, that gives them some more comfort. By the way, if you don't know what wholesaling is, I have other videos on that subject as well. So let's dive in. Why is building a buyer's list actually a bad idea? Well, it turns out the most recent statistics prove that some 90% of house flips, where someone, and I call flipping a house, where you buy it, renovate it, and resell it, that 90% of those cases are what we call, or what I call, one and done. It's an investor, if you want to call it that, that does one deal. They buy it, fix it up, sell it, and then they say to themselves, I'm never doing this again. 90%! Now, why is, why is this the case? I have other videos of why people fail. It's pretty obvious, though. They pay too much for the house to begin with. Then, to overcompensate for having to pay too much, what they then have to do is either do some of the rehab work themselves, or they hire the wrong contractor that's super cheap in pricing, and then they figure out later why it was so cheap, they never get the work done. And then all of a sudden, they're not only behind the eight ball on what they pay, they're behind the eight ball on what happened with the rehab, they may have over rehabbed, and now they put the property on the market, it takes too long to sell, when it's all said and done, they're like, I'm done with this. I'm never doing this again. 90% of the time, that's the case. So what about the 10%? Who are those people? Those are the smart ones. Those are the real investors. Those are the ones that are doing this over and over and over and over again. So I'll give you a quick story. My first deal I ever did um, as a wholesaler, uh, it, was, it was not a necessarily an ultra creative deal. I literally had got the property under contract. I was nailing a for sale by owner sign in the front yard. Neighbor comes over, his name was Ernie. Never forget him. Ernie comes over and he says, how much you selling it for? And I had the deal under contract for way too high of a price. I was a complete beginner. I was an idiot. And uh, I had it under contract for like one, 110. And I said, oh, I'm selling it for 115. And uh, he says, you got a deal. And I said, really? He said, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, this actually works. I read this in a book and all of a sudden this is actually happening. <laughs> so this guy gets a HELOC on his primary residence. He pays 115 for this house. I kid you not, he put $10,000 into it. That was just the materials cost. Him and his son did all the work. So they were in it at $125. He sold it for $129. And of course, there was the real estate commissions and the closing costs. He lost a lot of money. What an idiot. Well, uh, he actually went in for a second time. He said, you know, Phil, I learned the hard way that time. This time I'll do it right. And the next deal I try to sell to Ernie, he made a real offer on it, and it was way too low. What did I learn from that first experience? There are sucker investor buyers out there that pay too much. And as a wholesaler, those are the deals you're going to make the most money on. If you sell to the 10%, if you sell to this audience, they're going to offer a whole lot less. And what so many wholesalers do across America is they sell to these people and they sell themselves short. That's why it's a bad idea. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute, Phil. If I'm building a buyer's list, well, yeah, maybe 10% are the smart ones, but what about the 90%? That's the kicker. When you're building a buyer's list, you're going to build 100% or almost 100% of the smart ones. Why? Because you're going to go to this, the usual places to find these names. You're going to search on Google, you're going to look at signs, you're going to go to your real estate club meeting. You're going to run into these people. These people are not as easy to find. Ernie walked across the street in that example. Finding these people, 
The, these are the one and done. So often they're working with a real estate agent because they want to find their first house flip. And, and so what ends up happening is you don't run into this group when you're building your list. You build a 100% list of, 10, uh, of these 10 percenters. I get these calls all the time, y'all, from my, my marketing here in my local area. I mean, these people call and it's just pitiful. They're like, hey, if you're ever, you know, um, looking for a deal, I, I've got some good deals. And I say, great, can you give me an address? They'll give me an address of a property, they'll give me a price, and they'll say, you're $30,000 above where you should be on that deal. And they'll go, huh? Uh, what? And then I give them a lecture on why what they're doing is completely worthless and a, use, and a waste of their time. <laughs> but anyways, the, the idea is you're going to build this list in almost all cases. So this is the wrong list to build. And so then when you try to flip to these people, they all offer you such a low amount, you start to think wholesaling doesn't work. You're not dealing with the earnings of the world, the one and dones that pay way too much their first time around. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Phil, this sounds unethical. You're selling these properties for way too much. No, I put them on the market. I let the market decide what they're going to pay. It has nothing to do with my ethics at all. I put it on the market, the market pays what it's going to pay, and voila. I don't keep it off the market to just some private list of smart investors that pay way too little. That's why building a buyer's list is a bad idea. Now, here's the caveat. The caveat is if you can build this list. Problem is that list is a lot more expensive. And typically the only way to make that mathematically work is if you're doing a ton of wholesales in a year. You're doing 30, you're doing 50, you're doing more. You can build this kind of list, which is expensive because you have to go through the normal marketing channels of Google and Facebook. And um, I know, for example, some of my, my, uh, my graduates of the apprentice program, some of the bigger players in the industry that are doing a half to a, a million dollars a year, a lot of them are doing a lot of wholesaling right now because of the efficiency over rehabbing. But they're building this list. Some actually drive them to a local seminar, and that's where they sell the houses to them directly to the seminar. Some of them are just building the list and building a, uh, um, by, by doing a lot of marketing to beginner real estate investors. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, but it's, it's expensive. It's, it's, it ends up being 1000 2000 or more uh, per buyer, and that's upfront cash. And so a lot of the people in this industry can never play in that, in that ball field. Instead, if you're, if you're dealing with this group right here, you're selling yourself short. So what's the solution? You don't build a buyer's list. You put the property on the market. We almost always unanimously put the property on the MLS. There's so many sucker investor buyers out there. You might say, well, how do you put a property on the MLS when you're not the owner? Well, you need to learn how all that works. I've got videos and all that stuff. Um, You've got to get dialed in and get the property on the MLS. The other thing you do is you do you can still blast it everywhere with what I call off-market techniques, which are or off MLS techniques, which would be your your Zillow and your Craigslist. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I, we have a lot of success with signs, where we'll do a sign that says something like this, um, like "Flip this house." You know, it's like the headline. Make sure it's handwritten, and then what you do is something like, you know, 100K value, and then you put like 50K price, or you may not have those exact numbers, but you get the idea, and then just a phone number. Handwritten signs like this, and you put those everywhere, that can work very well too. That's how you, you, you get access to this group on a one-by-one -one deal basis, and that's why it's efficient. Because each time you get the deal, now that you have the deal in hand, now you market for that buyer. Both the best is on the MLS, but the, even on the MLS, off the MLS will, will work for that one deal. And then what ends up happening is you start to do that over and over again. You actually inadvertently will build a couple more of these on your list. The problem is this group is fast. They buy properties instantly because they want to be in the business, right? They just got done watching an HGTV show, and they think it'll be fun to be with their friend to go flip a house. They don't realize how much more work it is so, uh, if they don't do it right. So this group does not stick around long. This group, your, your list will just grow and grow and grow and grow on this list. It'll never grow stale. Who's ever of the 90% on your list will be, will be gone fast. That's why it's so hard unless you have massive volume to really target this group. Instead, on, a one, uh, on an individual deal basis, if you're doing it this way, you will pick up that at least one, if not more than one, really uh, awesome 90% one and done sucker investor buyer. You'll pick that thing up and then you'll sell that deal and hopefully another deal is coming around 
the corner, you can maybe sell the ones that didn't buy that first deal to the next one. If you didn't, that's okay. Just go back and do it again. And your cost per buyer ends up being less. Now again, I go back to, if you have it on the MLS, it's the best way to do it. And here's why. You get the benefit of the market to maybe bid the price up. One of the big mistakes of not getting it on the MLS, hear me on this, even though you've got to pay a buyer's agent, we always do a flat fee listing. If you never heard that phrase, it's on basically all my other videos when I talk about this subject of selling a house on the MLS. And there's a bunch of flat fee listing uh, brokers out there. There's probably one for your local area that's, you know, two, three hundred bucks or something. When you keep it off the MLS and you just go off MLS, you don't create a full market. And so it doesn't get bid up as much. So this is something that we have statistically proven in our organization over a long period of time. We debated this for years, by the way. Years of debate on this with our coaching team. And we proved that even though you have to pay 3% commission to the buyer's agent on the MLS, you still make more money because the market pushes the price to the maximum price someone's willing to pay. Whereas if you keep it off the MLS, which is what you always do if you just have this buyer's list, you don't get that bidding most of the time that really pushes it up. And so what ends up happening is you sell yourself short even though you think you save money by not paying the 3% uh, for the agent. Does that make sense? Because I threw that in really fast. It's a big part of this. You will make more money even though you pay the MLS 3% to the buyer's agent by getting it on there because you create the full market. But I like to do both. I mean, just create a blitz. I mean, just an absolute launch. So you can find the biggest sucker that is out there right now willing to pay the absolute most for that property. That's who you're trying to target. All right. Well, that explains why building a buyer's list is a bad idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think I'm completely off on all this, feel free to debate me in the comments below. But uh, we, we've proven it over the last 15 years because I, I put my uh, money where my mouth is. I'm a I'm a major player in the world of wholesaling and house flipping across the United States with all of my apprentices. Speaking of which, if you want to learn more uh, about how to work with me and my team, uh, consider applying for my apprentice program where my coaching team and I, we, uh, we transform absolute beginners and we turn them into money-making machines. We have a passion for teaching and we, we share in the profits so we make a lot of money along the way, as do you. And uh, uh, also, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Phil Pustiovsky with Freedom Mentor, um, and I've been a real estate investor my entire adult life, my entire career in business. And uh, these days, I'm the mentor uh, to many of the most successful investors across the United States, uh, in fact, all of North America. This book right here, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, I give away for free. It is truly free. You can get a uh, a, a copy of that uh, by clicking that link up there. And uh, again, if you've got other questions and comments about this video, uh, pl please feel free to share below. I, uh, I sometimes create controversial subjects that are completely diametrically opposed to what everybody else teaches. And it's because I'm in the real world every day. And uh, we learn signal and truth, not from the regurgitations of other people, but from doing thousands and thousands of deals. We see the truth as it really is. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.